Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video I want to show you the results of the 52 tropical islands with Mirror of Delirium. So last week I did a very similar test, but there has been some changes this time around when it comes to Delirium, so I wanted to do this test again and compare them. So let's talk about these changes. So first of all, the map of choice is Tropical Island because it is one of the best, if not the best maps for Delirium because the way Mirror of Delirium works is the further away monsters are from the beginning of the maps, the more simulacrum splinters you're gonna get. And Tropical Island is very nice layout for that. And last week, Tropical Island was in the same zone as the simulacrum, uh, not simulacrum, the Delirium passives. So you would get more splinters and so on, thanks to the passes. But this time around it is in a different zone. So you can still do it here. I think a lot of people are doing uh, Delirium with Promenade, which is also a very nice layout for uh, Mirror of Delirium. But Galena Cairns actually also has some decent stuff like uh, Beyond, Abyss and Ava, which increase the monster count in your map, which is also pretty nice for Delirium. And the second big difference is the map device. So last week we had the uh, Delirium map device mod for 16 Chaos. Now we don't have it, so we have to find some kind of other way to guarantee Mirror of Delirium in your map. And that way is to just buy uh, Watchstones with Sextant modifier, area contains Mirror of Delirium. So you can buy these watchstones with four uses right now for around one exalt. But when I actually started doing this test, they were going for 1.7 exalts. So I actually had to pay way more for that. And also when you are buying them, uh, you should watch out for the amount of uses. For example, this one only has two uses on the watchstone, even though it has four uses on Mirror of Delirium. So you also might want to uh, filter it this way. At least 4 or even like 12 if you want to use the um, Warstones later on after you run out of the Sexton, so it is up to you. Okay, so I was buying this uh, Warstones and on top of that I was using 3 Warstones with increased stack size of Simulacrum Splinters with passes for Delirium, Abyss and Alva. There is a lot of other strategies you can do. I know that some people are going full for uh, Beyond and even buying Watchstones with Beyond Sextant and Unique Monsters drop Corrupted Items. This way you can also roll your maps to always have Beyond and you get just a ton of Divines thanks to the Beyond, and you also get some additional basic currency items First, thanks to this one. I would probably remove Alva for this. And you can also even, as a fourth one, put the Nemesis, but then you're uh, paying way more for every single map, and I just wanted to focus on farming Simulacrum Splinters with this strategy. So, um, my setup was just four chisels, alchemy, checking for uh, uh, good mods, and then valing it. Uh, after that, I would put the... Actually, I would first remove three watchstones, put blocks for uh, just some random um, sex and modifiers, just so I have a higher chance to get something nice, and then I would use uh, Awaken at Sextant, so for example this one is gonna give me breaches, second one more monsters, and third one fire monsters. Now I remove these watch ones, put back the good ones, and the Mirror of Delirium. And with this one you have to watch out because it adds prefix, and prefix can be reflect but because I got the uh, reflex sextance, I don't have to worry about it. You can also use a flask with reduced reflective damage taken, 
you can even uh, go for the uh, Pantheon if you want to do that but yeah otherwise you might want to use the uh, wordstones with map has one additional suffix instead of prefix if you don't want to get reflect from time to time okay so this is my setup when it comes to wordstones and also the middle passives uh, look like this secrets of the wordstone is the most important one the second one is enduring influence because you're gonna buy wordstones with four uses so you want uh, your wordstones to also have four uses and everything else doesn't really matter that much and these scarabs of choice uh, are elder scarab it doesn't have to be polished it can be rusted polished abyss because it gives 50% 50 50 increased uh, monsters and also the uh, abyssal army gives another 100% so abyss gives a ton of monsters into your map breach again for some additional monsters and blight blight actually is very nice the amount of monster it spawned is actually ridiculous for the delirium and I was using polish just for additional boss so there is even more monsters and it's like one chaos more expensive so why not you can also go for a lot of different uh, scarabs for example the divination scarab is pretty nice because now uh, the tropical island also drops a new card for exalted orb called scout so divination scarabs are actually pretty nice you can go for harbingers also mm, maybe something else like legion maybe even uh, strong boxes so there's a lot of choice but this was basically my setup okay so i think that's everything and now i would just go into the map i would always use beyond for even more monsters as my map device and alva and just open the map now the one last thing is that you always have to watch out for the amount of influence uh, procs you get because if you uh, happen to be in this spot so you're gonna uh, proc the conqueror during this map your watchstones are gonna get locked and you're not gonna be able to remove them and if you open the conqueror map you're gonna lose one uh, use of your sex notes and of your watchstones so what you want to do is in this scenario you want to open the map then go here and just remove all of the watchstones and put some random ones and the map is still gonna have uh, all of the effects of the watchstones that you had earlier and now when you're gonna proc the conqueror you're not gonna lose uh, uses of the sextons and watchstones and then you can obviously remove them again and put, put these back on and you also want to do the same thing uh, when you are doing the second to last map because of the possible adept tracker proc in case you get the uh, double progress towards the citadel if you are not using this obviously you don't have to care about it but yeah okay so now let me show you the example map so my build is pretty nice for a uh, mirror of delirium but uh, because i'm not using headhunter i'm using mage blood it's not uh, crazy like obviously headhunter is very nice for this type of strategy because you get a lot of rare monsters so you get a lot of stacks and so on and in terms of this card i'm just proccing it from time to time i'm not like fully focusing on uh, uh, getting like all of the scourge monsters killed because uh, a mirror of delirium is progressing even if you are in the scourge so sometimes you might uh, lose your delirium if you spend too much time doing the scourge but what is also a good thing to know is which uh, league mechanics stop progression of delirium so for example right now when i'm standing on top of a blight and monsters are spawning the delirium uh, fog is stopped so it's not progressing so i can just stand in here for as long as i want to and uh, delirium is not progressing so i can prop my skirt i can clear run around skill some additional monsters 
so it is nice to use the leg mechanics kind of as a like a pit stop so you can just stand here and kill stuff around you and you're sure that the mirror is not progressing and the other thing about the leg mechanics is that mm, depending on where they spawn you're gonna get more splinters out of them so you always want the leg mechanics to spawn later because this way you're gonna be able to stop the progression during later stages which is nice and also on top of that the monsters from the leg mechanics are gonna drop more splinters because they spawn further away from the entrance so this blight is not gonna give me that many splinters unfortunately because it is very early on same for this abyss and the uh, first bridge that I just did I got abyssal depths I'm gonna check if there is a leech and you can always know if there is a leech uh, when you look at the loading screen so if I got this loading screen when I was entering then it would be a leech in here in there but it was a different one so there was no leech that's breach number two and I actually should get four breaches because I am using the scarab and the uh, sextant for additional two breaches right now so again once I, when I am inside of the breach uh, the fog is not progressing if I run out like here it is progressing again so make sure you're always inside of a bridge okay and now I got the scout drop so this is the card that drops only in uh, this map it's worth around one exalt basically okay so let's go further one uh, nice thing is that I didn't get a single Alva in uh, this first uh, part of the map and Alva is uh, giving a lot of delirium progression so it is very nice that it's gonna spawn later now let's try not to lose the delirium and deaths are actually not that important because I am using cast on death portal so this setup portal and cast on death so when I die the portal is gonna spawn here on my death and I'm gonna be able to just continue with uh, mapping if you don't use the cast on death portal then if you die you're gonna spawn at the beginning of the map and you're just gonna lose your uh, delirium and you're not gonna get that many splinters so it is always nice to use the cast on death portal if you are doing this strategy the only issue with it is that if you die when you are inside of the Alva uh, incursion then the portal obviously can't spawn over there so it is nice to uh, just use portal on your own when you are entering the Alva just to be sure in case you die here you have a portal right outside And so, yeah, again, this uh, all of all three of the Alvas are gonna be in this part of the map, so it's gonna be nice. A lot of simulacrum splinters. Let's clear uh, some uh, scourge a little bit. And now I'm gonna try to be as fast as I can because uh, very often delirium will just catch on and you're gonna lose. Uh, your fog before killing the map boss and again killing the map boss and the monsters that are at the end of the map are the most important one so you want to make sure always that you uh, kill everything at the end of the map fortunately I got two breaches in this area so now I can use them uh, as the place where I can just stand and my delirium is not progressing and I can just clear everything even in a uh, scourge also I will run out over run I will run over all of the mushrooms the pods from delirium for additional monsters let's clear this alva 
And when I am doing also Alva, I am also always checking for the uh, corruption and gem rooms, because they can be some nice additional profit. Mostly cleared. Actually, let me open the door. And now there is a third one. Also, sometimes you might get unlucky, and the Delirium Fog is like progressing faster than it is in some other case. I think it's like depends on how uh, map layout spawns. Like some times. It's just the delirium f f fog will uh, progress much faster than in some other cases. Good job, so even though we, if though we might think you are safe, like uh, delirium is not catching on to you, sometimes suddenly it's like very fast and it's just finished. So. It can also be a good idea to, like, when you are literally at the end of the map, just to rush towards the map boss, uh, just to make sure you kill it. And very often I would, uh, like, be in the middle of this second part of the layout, and suddenly Delirium is right where I am. I'm in the end of the fog, and I just have to rush towards the boss. Okay, now let's kill the boss. Fortunately, this time. I was able to kill pretty much everything. Delirium is still uh, here. Just trying to clear some more stuff in Scourge. And that's pretty much it. Let's see where Delirium is. So it is still pretty far, so this time I got pretty lucky when it comes to Oh, and I died at the end. When it comes to spawns of the mechanics that stop the progression of delirium, so I was able to clear everything. And yeah, it's not always a case like this. Okay, let's go back to the end of the map and start looting. So this time around I got 164 splinters. And the amount of splinters you get is very RNG, but the most important part again is how many league mechanics are gonna spawn in this uh, part of the um, map. This time I got lucky with the Alva, but uh, unfortunately Blight and Abyss was literally at the beginning. I think like five times I got more than 250 splinters so it varies a lot and the least amount of uh, amount of them i got uh, without actually failing delirium earlier before uh, clearing everything was like 100 so it is a uh, very energy so i'm not gonna finish looting them up right now just to make a video shorter but yeah i would just run back loot everything and then run the next map and just to show you right now, I can't remove the watchstone, so if I would open the citadel right now, uh, I'm not gonna lose my uh, sexton charges. Okay, so now let's look at the loot. So again, I did 52 maps with uh, Mirror Delirium in Tropical Islands, and here are all of the cluster jewels I got, and I did post them for 20C and I got whispers maybe for like two or three of them, so none of them are really worth that much at this point of the league. And I don't believe there is a single medium cluster jewel that is worth anything, so I just removed them. Mm, here are all of the contracts. I didn't include them in the final spreadsheet, so it doesn't really matter that much, but the contracts plus blueprints should be on our like 500C or something. And here are all of the simulacrums and delirium orbs. So in the end I did get 30 uh, simulacrums, 
and current price of simulacrums is like 1.7x, 1.6x, depending on how many of them you sell in bulk. So if it's 1.7x, so uh, 263 chaos mm, times 30, uh, I got 8,000 just 8,000 8, chaos just from simulacrums. Uh, simulacrums. And if you look at the amount of splinters I got in every single map, so uh, 300 splinters is one simulacrum, so times 30, I got 9,000 splinters in 52 maps. So on average, every single map was giving me 173 splinters, and every single splinter is a little bit less than 1C. I would say it's around 0 0.9 chaos so if you are use, lo losing mm, like 260 chaos for uh, uh, watchstone this watchstones uh, you are losing so 1.7x times 155 uh, divided by 4 because uh, for uses you are losing 65c per map for the uh, sextant and you are easily getting it back just from the splinters okay so these are all of the simulacra uh, all of the delirium rewards here are all of the like random stuff just scar ups fossils essences and so on and i did get three uh chronicles with locus of corruption which uh, go for around 1.7x i believe i'm not sure and two rooms with two uh, chronicles with rooms for the gem corrupt so doriani institute here are uh five scouts that i dropped and one crusader exalted orb and one watson from the awakener here are all of the maps blighted maps from the blight some uniques i actually did get decent amount of leeches thanks to the uh underground kingdom so I did end up dropping one Shroud of the Lightless and one Amonamus Gaze, which goes for 1.5, 1.7x, and Shroud of the Lightless go for like 2x. So pretty nice um, items. And here is the last tab, which is uh, currency. So I ended up with eight Exalted Orbs and a lot of other currencies. And when it comes to sextants, I actually did roll once Nemesis when I was just uh, rolling random sextants and once uh, unique monsters drop corrupted items. So thanks to this I got quite a lot of divines and from the Nemesis sextant I actually dropped I think like three exalts. So three of them came from the Nemesis sextant. So this is all of the loot. Now let's look at the spreadsheet. So again, 52 maps. Here are all of the scarabs I used. 13 watchstones for 30 for 52 maps. Uh, I did end up using 63 sextants. I was rolling the maps uh, and using val orbs. So every single map with basically this is chisels, alchemy, val orb, and re-rolling the maps. So I was counting it as two chaos per and map device beyond 5c per map so in total i did spend like 5000 chaos and it took me 11 hours to complete this test and uh, here is the profit uh, in each tab so this is so this tab was the delirium rewards so simulacrum splinters simulacrums and the delirium orbs here is all of the random stuff so the uh, scar ups and so on uh, maps and unique items and currency so again one tab second tab third tab and fourth tab and again i am not including contracts and the uh, cluster jewels so in total i made seventeen thousand chaos and it did cost me five thousand uh, chaos to run them up so profit is eleven thousand chaos which is 77 exalts if you count exalts as 155c so profit per hour is seven exalts per hour and again i am 
counting watchstones as 1.7x because that's uh, how much I was paying for them. But right now they are going for around 1x. So if you would count uh, watchstones as 1x, which is 155c, it would be actually 8 exalts per hour. So it is pretty nice. It is a pretty hard strategy. Mm, you need a very nice build to be able to clear a uh, full mirror because it, before, before it catches on to you. So it is not for everyone. But if you have a headhunter uh, build with like a lightning arrow or tornado shot or something, uh, it's probably not that hard. I personally don't like this strategy. It can be pretty frustrating when sometimes you just get bad RNG with where the league mechanics spawn or when the delirium is just catching on to you or sometimes you just drop much less splinters that, than you would expect so and I also don't really like delirium just running around uh, on the, all of the pods and the performance issues in delirium are uh, pretty bad so I am not a the biggest fan when it comes to this strategy but it is a pretty nice one. Last league, I believe in the same test, I got like four or five X per hour. So it is better this time around, even though there is no delirium on map device. The reason why uh, you are getting more profit is because simulacrums are much more expensive. So last league, I believe they were going for like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 X. And now if you want to buy at least like five in bulk they go for 1.6 1.7 even 1.8 x so they are much more expensive this time around so this is why this is a pretty nice strategy so thanks for watching and see you next time